a revealed revision from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Holy Quran, Shara'alakum, minat dini ma wassa bihi nuhan, wallazi awhayna ila Ibrahim. That your deen is the same one which we had given to Hazrat Nuh, to Hazrat Ibrahim, and we have sent it down to you, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sometime Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word ummah wa anna hazihi ummatukum ummatun wahida. Since Adam up to Muhammad, all those who followed the revealed rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are the same and one group. There is no any difference between the followers of Nuh and Ibrahim or between the followers of Ibrahim and Musa or the followers of Musa and Isa or the followers of all of them and the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So deen means Islam which is a perfect and complete code of life. As I mentioned there, the first of all we will start from faith and belief. The first chapter of deen is beliefs. Second one, then we will proceed towards worship to establish connection and relation and friendship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What far we are going to offer our prayer? What far we are trying to do fasting? Only to have a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To become close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be much more nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After the ibadah, there is another field and another chapter or shoba and branch of deen which is called family life or fiqhul usra. A Muslim family, how it will be established and be united and how the family members are to be dealt with by the chief of that family. What will be the right and duties of every individual as far as a family, a Muslim family is concerned. What will be the rights of parents? But what will be the duties of parents? What are the rights of children? But what are their duties? What is the right of a, 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 a woman or a wife? But what are her duties? What is the right of a husband? And what will be his duty? So, that is the third chapter or third branch of the while the fourth one, then you will have connection and relation with your fellow human being as far as your social life is concerned. There will be some business and some transactions and businesses. So Sharia, our deen has given you rules in this regard. How you will buy, how you will sell, how you will register a case of preemption, how you will go to a court of law regarding your mortgage or lease or partnership. How you will launch your partnership with your partner as far as financial matters are concerned. The fifth one, as you know, that every human being has two requirements of his nature. One, lust and wishes, through which he demands something, he acquires something. Why? When someone will try to snatch his right, he has all the right to defend himself. And there is a thing. In the nature of every human being, a requirement and demand of his nature, which is called anger and ghadab al arquwatul ghadabiyyah. Because if you will not have any kind of ghadab, you cannot defend yourself. You will be a silent spectator there. You cannot defend your faith. You cannot defend your ezza and your honor and respect, your dignity. That is a must for every human being. So, as far as his shahawat are lust, uh, his poor ghazabiyya and anger to defend himself, that is concerned. They are in need of a superior authority to be controlled by. Therefore, Sharia or Islam as a deen has given concept of state and government. That is called state law or establishment of state and government. And then we will proceed furthermore to another branch. What will be the duty of that state and government? They will resolve the issues erupted amongst its citizens and subjects. So, there you will be in need of to know what is crime and what is thought. Thought means 
financial harm to someone which you have caused and crime may a bodily or as far as your respect is concerned that is to be considered as a crime but in islam there is another kind of crime which is related to our faith while those who have no any value in their mind for their own faith and religion they don't consider that everyone has every individual personal problem no not at all deen and faith is the first priority in holy quran and sunnah all other things are subject to the approval of deen so there will be shakh damana of la ar la aftar and fiqh al janayat are la related to crimes then there will be a judicial process or a judiciary which is called adab al qadi adab or procedural law or procedural system how will be the procedural system in islamic sharia or in deen of islam and when you establish a national concept or a national government based upon faith and religion you will be in need of some relation with other states and governments maybe an islamic or muslim one or maybe a non muslim one that is called a seer or islamic international law so deen which is alter, uh, an alternate to the, the, the islam that is a perfect and complete code of life while sometimes it is used in the meaning of set up beliefs and faiths only the second word which i have mentioned that is sharia sharia it has its dictionary meaning set up laws or rules and laws and therefore allah subhanahu wa taala said li kullin ja'alna minkum shir'atan wa minhaja li kullin to every messenger and his followers we have given shir'atan a different sharia and different rules and laws as far as their environment or their atmosphere and demands and requirements of concern because the demands of the time of hazrat ibrahim were different to the demands of the times of hazrat nuh alaihi salatu wassalam when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came allah subhanahu wa taala gave him a sharia or set up rules and law which are perpetual and everlasting up to the day of resurrection no one except a messenger can change the sharia of another messenger if you will say oh now the issue is so much clear the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was so much different than our time i will say okay okay i will admit that that is so but you are not a messenger to go and to abrogate the rules given by muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam these are everlasting these are far ever ma kana muhammadun aba hadim mir rijalikum walakin rasulullah wa khatam an nabiyyin but we can mean by khatam an nabiyyin that the rules and laws and system being given by muhammad is to be implemented in what its spirit up to the day of resurrection so respected brothers and sisters sharia mean rules and law but there is another term which is used in holy quran and also used in the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we the muslim are so much familiar to that very term and that is the term fiqh what is fiqh dictionary meaning is dictionary meaning is understanding in depth of anything that is called fiqh but as a term what we can mean by fiqh ilm bil ahkam ash shar'iyah al amaliyah ahm adillatiha at tafsiriyah that is the definition being given by the ummah by the jurists of islamic jurisprudence ilm bil ahkam ash shar'iyah al amaliyah that is not knowledge of that is knowledge of shar'i ahkam which is related to your act which is related to your deed ilm bil ahkam ash shar'iyah al amaliyah an adillati at tafsiriyah but that is based upon dalail which has been taken from holy quran and from holy sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the fiqh been given by imam abu hanifa that is not his wishes or lust the fiqh been given by imam shafi is not based upon his own desire because every of them they were of the view but they were of the belief is a sahih hadith so who am i if i have given you a ruling in a specific issue and later on you got information of a hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you as a jurist considered them both what i have said and what you have informed by 
you have been informed by if there is difference between these two things and my point of view was not based upon any dalil of holy quran and sunnah look at but imam abu hanifa rahmatullah ne he went further more for the rubuh al hai throw my saying on any one of the walls where you are sitting wa khudu bil hadith and accept and adopt the ways been shown in a hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but that is not your job that is not my job that is the job of a jurist who know all about the holy quran and the holy sunnah all about the rules of islamic jurisprudence because you as a layman or i as a layman i can say oh rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said so and so yes rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said so much things rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said so much things but i have mentioned in my last lecture that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came in an atmosphere where their customs their conventions their rusum and rawaj and their usages and adab were so much worse type of customs and conventions when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came he did not drop away all these things all of a sudden or at once but rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam took them towards reformation gradually and slowly gradually and slowly so you will find in that very process that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had said so and so because you will find there that here we have seen in a hadith narrated by hafiz ibn kasir rahimahullah that hazrat ali radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu had said that the people were invited by abdur rahman ibn auf radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu to a dinner in his house and at that time i led salat e maghrib and we had taken wine and khamar and we were out of our sense at that time because of the use of these intoxicants then you will say oh hazrat ali radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu he was the fourth caliph of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam abdur rahman ibn auf radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu he was the sahabi of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam most of the sahaba they were present at that very dinner and they were taking wine no problem we will take also inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun just be afraid of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you do know when that event occurred and existed when and when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restricted or prohibited taking up wine that was on the four in the fourth year after emigration to madina al munawwara and after hijra to madina al munawwara therefore i said in my last lecture that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam took the people towards reformation and islah gradually and slowly and when he came to hajjat al wada he said al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmantu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al islam deena al yawm i have given you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said i have given you a perfect code of life a perfect system of life akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmantu alaykum ni'mati you do not know whether the laws given by the congress of america or the parliament of pakistan or the parliament in britain they these laws will be better for our life and we will get prosperity here in this world or the laws given by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this regard i have mentioned that one of the scholars of holy quran and sunnah he has said that the laws being given with an authority having some four qualities one rahmat e shamil his mercy must be inclusive to all and included to all and the second one qudrat e kamil he has a full authority He is not a weak one, and the third one, and the the third one, he may not be affected by environment and circumstances, and he may not be aligned to one of two parties. He may not be aligned or janibdar to one of two parties. If there will be such kind of circumstances, when the law giving authority, as I will say that, when a government wants. to spare someone to spare someone of its own police from a specific kind of punishment then they implement a law with retrospective effect that is called retrospective effect and there the intention is malafied and that malafied intention means if they want that one of our police has committed a crime or committed a sin and we want to spare him from such kind of punishment that is a janibdari so respected brothers and sisters when the authority will have these qualities then he has all the right 
to give a perfect kind of laws and rules which can provide you satisfaction which can provide you prosperity here and if that authority is only allah subhanahu wa taala his knowledge his knowledge is a complete and perfect one he knows the past the present and he knows the future as well if we will say that allah subhanahu wa taala had given the laws and rules being given to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam which were according to the circumstances muhammad had at medina or at makkah or his colleagues have at makkah just imagine whether you are a moment you believe in the knowledge and in the sifa and the quality of allah subhanahu wa taala you believe in the very wording of allah subhanahu wa taala in the alim al bizat sudur wallahu yalamu antum la ta'lamun therefore whenever allah subhanahu wa taala gives us a specific rule in this regard and you will apply your own circumstances dear allah subhanahu wa taala right away says wallahu yalam do believe in what i have given to you because allah yalam allah knows the future wa antum la ta'lamun and you don't know what will be the circumstance what will be the the result ultimate results of this kind of thing so respected brothers and sisters in this regard i had mentioned last time that objectives of sharia objectives of sharia so i mentioned three things one deen the second one that is sharia and the third thing that is fiqh so fiqh is derived law from the dalail and the sources of sharia what are the sources of sharia the holy book the second so the practices of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the third thing the consensus of opinion of the sahaba of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam because whenever an ijma and consensus of sahaba took place it means that they never violated the the the, the, the practice of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you can you can imagine about the sahaba rizwanullah alaihi majma'in that they were the people they were the people uh, superseding the rules given by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam not at all not at all hazrat umar radhiyallahu ta'ala an once he was asked by the sahaba rizwanullah alaihi ajma'in regarding mut'a he declared and he gave a declaration in this regard that was not his own ruling that was the ruling based upon the hadith a heard by umar ibn al khattab and most of the sahaba in ghazwa autaz and also in ghazwa khaybar by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but some of the people because there were victories in the time of hazrat umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anha the iraq became a part of islamic state iraq of that time syria became a part of islamic state most of the parts of today's africa became parts of the islamic state and the people there they were not aware of that very hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so hazrat umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu he issued a declaration in this regard that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us on ghazwa khaybar so and so and he told us in ghazwa auta so and so i just only giving you an example so then the ijma of sahaba took place at that very time and the ijma of sahaba that is a hujjat qat'i that is a source of islamic sharia is holy quran is that is a source of islamic sharia as the sunna of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is and the fourth one that is called qiyas analogy or analog analogical deduction based upon a common cause a common cause either expressed in a text of holy quran or expressed in a text of holy hadith or derived that common cause has been derived by one of the jurists and he based the specific issue upon that very common cause that is called qiyas so in this regard i mentioned that the objectives of sharia are four in number one removal of difficulties allah subhanahu wa taala did not want to put you in troubles as allah subhanahu wa taala said la yukallifu allah nafsan illa wusaha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never make you bound to do a thing which is beyond your bearing power. Wa ma ja'ala alaykum fi ddini min haraj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not made anything mandate which can cause you trouble. Wa ma ja'ala alaykum fi ddini min haraj. Yuridu Allah bikum al yusr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the the form of future. Yuridu Allah bikum al yusr. the rules and laws being given by allah subhanahu wa taala in the future allah subhanahu wa taala intends for you the yusr and the sahuda and the ease wala yuridu bikum al yusr and allah subhanahu wa taala does 
not intend or will not intend in future even to put you in trouble and to to to, to take you to our difficulties and therefore rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said ad-din yusr the din is yusr sahula in ease itself so respected brothers and sisters the first thing in sharia the first objective of sharia is the removal of difficulties the second thing a reduction of obligation once rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came and he stood upon member and he said to the sahaba ask me about your deen ask me about your deen so one of the sahaba he stood and asked him about a specific thing one of the sahaba he stood up and asked him about a thing which allah subhanahu wa taala did not discuss in holy quran and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has made it set aside to be on five that is a mubah one that is all you have all the right to do i believe it at the moment jibril amin came and implemented an aya not only that he brought then aya that aya ibn taymiyah rahimahullah has mentioned in usul at-tafsir that jibril amin came and he ordered rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam on behalf of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that recite to them the verse of holy quran ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tas'alu an ashya'a in tubda lakum tasukum wa in tas'alu anha hina yunazzal alquran tubda lakum ghafallahu anha from the very ayah the jurist abu hanifa imam shafi ahmad ibn hanbal makhul ghatay ibn abi raba sa'id ibn musayyib sa'id ibn jubair hasan al basri waqi ibn al jarrah imam shafi ibn uyayna sufyan al thawri qadi ibn abi layla imam zufar nuh ibn abi maryam hasan ibn ziyad because the jurist they are plenty in number there were not only four imam there were plenty in number but the fiqh or the law or sharia being given by these four imams or five imams including imam ibn hazm and imam daud zahiri of ahli hadith that was compiled by their disciples there the people started to follow these imam and as far as the remaining imams are concerned though they were the teachers of these great imam as i mentioned the name of imam shafi he was the teacher of abu hanifa rahim allah i have mentioned the name of aqib al jarrah he was the teacher of imam malik ibn anas rahim allah i have mentioned qadi ibn abi layla he was jurist as imam abu hanifa was but he could not get such kind of disciple as abu hanifa had like muhammad ibn hasan al shaybani or qadi abu yusuf or zufar or hasan ibn ziyad or nuh ibn abi maryam or imam malik or later on imam shafi a person who was student of imam malik and also student of muhammad ibn hasan rahimahullah who was the disciple of hazrat imam abu hanifa rahimahullah so they compiled their fiqh they compiled their law and they presented it to the ummah in a compiled state you will see six compiled book by imam abu hanifa and seven compiled book by qadi abu yusuf and that is based upon the ijtihad of imam abu hanifa rahimahullah kitab al athar li muhammad al muwatta lil imam muhammad al sir al kabir lil imam muhammad al sir al saghir lil imam muhammad that is based upon islamic international law only the specific subject of these two books are muslim international law how you will deal other islamic or non islamic states when you will get power in a specific state which you have so the second brother and sister the second thing is reduction of obligation that is the objective of sharia second thing allah wa anha allah subhanahu wa taala says that i have left it to you to do it or not to do it but subject to are provided you may not violate the basic principles of quran and sunnah for example if you will say that in holy quran allah subhanahu wa taala has mentioned only four things inna ma harrama alaykum al maita wa al dam wa lahm al khinzir wa ma uhilla li ghayri allah bihi that allah subhanahu wa taala has forbidden for you to eat al maita you know the murda the mur- al maita the murda and the second one wa al dam the blood the blood of the veins of an animal and the third one wa lahm al khinzir wa lahm al khinzir the pig wa ma uhilla li ghayri allah bihi and a pledge which you have made but not in the name of allah subhanahu wa taala in the name of someone else than allah subhanahu wa taala which is called nazrun niyaz in our terminology we can say in english pledge 
that will be a kind of pledge or something like that how dr police sir that will be a pledge i i will say that that is a pledge which you have made not in the name of allah subhanahu wa taala but in the name of someone else than allah subhanahu wa taala so that is wama uhilla li ghairi allah now if you will study the holy quran thoroughly you will not find a fifth one as far as you are eating is concerned that is prohibited by holy quran it is prohibited by holy quran but you are bound just to study in which circumstances allah subhanahu wa taala commanded so and so the pagan the fakka they used to eat either maida or dung or lahmul khinzir or muhimma wa illa ghayr illa so allah subhanahu wa taala right away picked up these four things they did not be forbidden in the sharia of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you are going to oppose muhammad only for the sake of a position sallallahu alaihi wasallam and in this regard what is haram and what is halal in sharia as far as you are eating up meat and beef is concerned rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said kullu zina bin min asba wa kullu zin mikhl bin min atyur fa huwa haram rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam has given us a formula in this regard a kulia in this regard that any one of the animal which will take food with by his teeth and cut it and any kind of uh, uh, bird any kind of bird which can tear its food or something like that with its teeth rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said these kinds of animals and birds are forbidden for you to be eaten so now you will ask me about a specific bird in india for example that sahib will ask me that we have a bird here in india whether that is halal or haram and i haven't seen that very bird i i haven't heard even about that very bird how i will say i will present to him this very formula being given by muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam just if like it if that is not of such a kind then that is halal that is mean hafallahu anha that you may not ask rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam about your specific specific issues you ask him about the principle he will give you the principle he will give you the sources of islamic sharia so the second objective of sharia is reduction of obligation and the third thing the third thing that is universal justice what for allah subhanahu wa taala has sent the messengers to provide justice and to teach justice to the human being nowadays there is a violent propaganda against islam and muslim that they are cruel or they are brutal are they are zalim are they are terrorists are they are dakhshatgar inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun islam basically and originally is a religion of peace but to protect yourself to protect your honor to protect your dignity to protect your property to protect your belonging to protect your mind and skill and to protect your faith and belief this is the point this is the point. all other things these are recognized all over the world even in america if someone will invade america they will have all the right to protect it if someone will invade their property and their belongings they will have as they have done as far as the bombing there in kenya or tanzania are concerned what they have done in this regard and they got the plea that they have all the right to protect our citizens because these things are recognized principles